Hi there. We're going to continue the discussion of glycolysis, citric acid, and oxidative phosphorylation by seeing how those three steps relate to the interconnections between molecular breakdown and molecular synthesis. So we'll be describing the events of anabolism and catabolism. So recall that metabolism is the combination of catabolic and anabolic reactions in the cell. Catabolism, or exergonic reactions, here the reactants have lots of potential energy and the energy is released as products are formed with less potential energy. And in anabolism, or endergonic reactions, reactants have less potential energy and energy is required and products are formed with more potential energy. So in catabolism, this is where we use the cell respiration pathway. It is a catabolic process that breaks down molecules and leads to the formation of ATP. But on the other side of that, those smaller monomer units are used in anabolism to make the large macromolecules and those get used to form cell parts to function as enzymes and other parts of cellular work so although glucose is considered to be the primary source of respiration there are actually three sources of molecules that are going to be used to generate ATP and we get these from the food we eat. Digestion breaks these macromolecules into the monomer subunits that get used in the cell respiration pathway. So again, our three macromolecule groups that we're going to follow here are carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. And recall that carbohydrates, the monomer for that, is a monosaccharide. And in this case, we're going to follow glucose. For fats, the monomers are glycerol and fatty acids. And then for proteins, the monomers are going to be amino acids. So let's follow carbohydrates first. So glycolysis can accept a wide range of carbohydrates for catabolism. In the GI tract, enzymes hydrolyze starch into glucose. The liver will hydrolyze glycogen to glucose. And then other disaccharides or carbs are used as fuel for glycolysis. Excess amino acids are converted by enzymes to intermediates of glycolysis, the citric acid cycle, and acetyl-CoA. They are deaminated. And this is where the amino group is removed from those amino acids and that amino group gets put onto a molecule called urea and we excrete urea then through our urine. Fats are hydrolyzed broken down into glycerol and fatty acid and then they enter into the pathway as specific intermediates to glycolysis and or acetyl-CoA formation. So here we can see glycerol is converted to an intermediate called G3P. It's kind of the fork in the road for glycolysis. And then fatty acids are broken down in two carbon fragments and those will enter into the citric acid cycle as acetyl-CoA. Now let's look at the other side. We just looked at catabolism, now we want to look at anabolism. So many metabolic pathways are going to be involved in the biosynthesis of biological molecules. Not everything is oxidized to make ATP energy and to survive, cells must be able to biosynthesize molecules that are not present in foods. Often the cell will convert intermediate compounds of glycolysis, the citric acid cycle, to molecules not found in food. Or, if you're sedentary, you don't need to make ATP and those molecules must be put into some kind of storage, like adipose tissue. So let's take each one of these one by one. Excess glucose is used to form carbohydrates. And carbohydrates are either stored as glycogen or converted 
to other carbohydrates that the cell uses or they can be converted and stored as fat. Fats, on the other hand, glycerol, can be formed by intermediate of glycolysis, G3P again, and then fatty acids can be formed two carbons at a time by using excess acetyl-CoA. And again, fats can be used as cell structures or then they're going to be stored as fat in adipose tissue. Proteins are formed through excess amino acids. These can be used to form cell structures and even proteins can be converted to fat. The amino acids arise from intermediates of the citric acid cycle, glycolysis, and the formation of acetyl-CoA. So here it is all overlapped. Thus there is this interconnection between cellular respiration, catabolism, and the biosynthesis pathways to build molecules and cell parts. The basic principle of supply and demand regulate these pathways. If there is an excess of molecules or we don't need to make ATP, then the pathways can be regulated by what's called feedback inhibition. So let's review what we've seen so far. Here are some questions. Let's see if we can answer each one. So amino acids are synthesized from intermediates of the citric acid cycle, glycolysis, and acetyl-CoA. Glycerol is formed from specific intermediates of glycolysis. Acetyl-CoA is used to synthesize fatty acids. Excess glucose is used to form carbohydrates. And here is our feedback inhibition pathway. Notice that when there is high ADP, that's going to stimulate glycolysis to enter into the cell respiration pathway. High ADP means low ATP, and if the cell needs that, ADB becomes a stimulus to those pathways to start making ATP. It affects a specific enzyme in glycolysis called phosphofructokinase. That same enzyme can also be inhibited. It gets inhibited by ATP and citrate from the citric acid cycle. If those levels become higher than the cell needs, then those two molecules will feed back to that enzyme and inhibit it. They work as allosteric inhibitors. If you recall from non-competitive inhibition when we talked about enzymes, this is where that is going to play a role, where these enzymes in the metabolic pathway are stimulated or inhibited based upon the constituents in the cell, what the cell needs or doesn't need. Here we can see a graph showing the difference in feedback inhibition. So the pink curve reflects the reduced need for glycolysis at high levels of ATP in the cell. And the green curve reflects the increased need for glycolysis at low ATP levels in the cell. So in the end, feedback inhibition will take the end product of a reaction and use it to inhibit an enzyme in an earlier step or pathway, and the pathway will shut down. In cellular respiration, ATP or citrate accumulation will inhibit an enzyme in glycolysis and slow down the pathway, conserving energy. Increased levels of ADP will activate that same enzyme which will activate glycolysis and the formation of ADP. And in this way the cell can stay in balance and use its resources more effectively. Okay, I'd like you to watch the next video on the basics of metabolism. It'll go through this again and I hope that will clear it up and I hope it was helpful as Mr. Anderson says. Bye-bye!